Welcome to Pretty Lies and Alibis, a podcast dedicated to the Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell case. Join us as we seek the truth and travel the long road to justice. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Pretty Lies and Alibis. I'm Gigi. And I'm Fruit Loop. We're going to go back to looking into the custody documents between Lori Vallow and Joseph Ryan. And one thing that the documents um, told us that we had often wondered about was, did Joe Ryan have a life insurance policy for Tylee? And the answer is yes. Joe Ryan was ordered by the court to purchase and maintain a life insurance policy in the amount of $350,000 in Lori's name with Tylee as the beneficiary. So we, I, I think for a while there was some confusion of whether or not there was one. We don't know whatever happened to that policy. I would assume it paid out. Yeah, I would think so. And uh, we know from Annie Cushing's post, uh, I think it was today on Twitter, she had some things uh, on there about Tylee being emancipated mm -hmm. and that's what they're trying to think. Okay. Is that why she was doing that was so she could access that money. Yeah. It would make sense. Yeah. But you know, the thing is, I wonder, was Tylee aware of why if her mom said, Hey, I want you to be emancipated. Uh, I wonder if she told Tylee it was because I could take your life insurance money. Yeah. I I don't know. I mean, it's all speculation until we get, you know, evidence, but. Of course. But, uh, I, I, yeah, I mean, she would have to give Tylee some explanation. Or I wonder if it's a situation where, um, who did she stay with when this was going on? Uh, from Annie's post, it looked like Alex. Mm -hmm. He was a truck driver and going a lot. So um, she was staying there. Very interesting. Yep. So we're just going to run through a few things. We're not going to talk about it in depth. But if you remember from the last uh, not the last podcast, but the one before that, we were talking about the um, guardian ad litem who was, I guess, essentially removed at some point in the middle of all this. Uh, wasn't it Tom Ware? Yes. That's his name, yeah. So on May 24th, 2007, that's when Tom Ware calls Lori's attorney and offers to change his testimony it actually wasn't Tom Ware that called. It was his attorney that called. Ah, uh, his attorney. Yep. Okay. So that call took place on May 24th, 2007. And didn't Lori's attorney go to the courts about that? Yes. Okay. Uh, from the story, they, in passing that next morning or whatever, on a court day, uh, Tom Ware's attorney passes and asks... Uh, Lori's What's his name? Lori's attorney, Mr. Hind something. Yeah, I'm, I'm not uh, sure of the name. I can't think of the name, but um, if they had a deal and he said no. So, so he was willing to change his testimony if they removed the request for him to be removed as the guardian. So on June 4th of 2007, there are there is an email sent to all the attorneys in the case about Vivian Lewis being removed. And... They say that she hasn't produced the test results for Joe Ryan. They're not sure when she's going to be available. This is uh, Mr. Ware. He says he's heard both sides complain about her competency and asks if they should consider some parts of her work reliable and others not. So I, how does that happen? Like, I don't know. I've never heard of anything like this. How can you, okay, say some of this, yes, I agree with, and the other part I don't, so we won't include what I don't agree with? Yeah, I, I assume. I don't know. It's all so wonky. I mean, every bit of it. But in the end, the suggestion was that both sides just agree to get another expert and start over, which is a nightmare in family court. It is just delay after delay. Yeah. I mean, the last thing you want is to have to get a new um, psychiatrist involved, have the testing done all over. It's expensive. It's traumatic for the kids to have to just relive this with strangers on a regular basis. Well, exactly. And you're looking at having to get a court date. Right. Having to work around work schedule. We know Joe worked. So having to work around a work schedule. And then what do you do with Tylee in between? You still have. Okay. So now, even though Joe passed the first one, now 
you're going to do a second one. So now the kid still has supervised visits and, you know, there's a hold up with that and, and all that. It's just traumatizing to Tylee. Right. And then it becomes complicated, I would imagine, if the second evaluation, he doesn't do well. And then you have two very conflicting reports and then it just becomes, that becomes an, a whole issue aside from everything going on. Just crazy. So on July 30th in 2007, uh, Tom Ware was removed as the guardian ad litem. So on August 21st, 2007, they appoint Mary Fogel as Tylee's new guardian ad litem. And then the next day after the new guardian was appointed, Lori asks for a jury trial about this issue. Wow. So that's sort of a summary of what we're leading up to, which is the jury trial. Now, the one thing, too, is in family court, it's a lot of preparation. It's a lot of stress. And, and your goal is just to get that court date over with. But you may not have your case heard on the day that you're on the docket because you may have an A or a B case. And the A case is sort of your priority. We, we'll see later on that there are times where they're ready to go to trial and it's, it's just not heard. And that's very frustrating. And it's hard on the kids, too. They're still in limbo. Nothing's decided. At least a, a, a final hearing on the matter gives the kids some stability, whichever way uh, the, you know, the cards fall for a little while. Because if, if one parent doesn't agree, then they have to file a motion to reconsider. And then you, you have to wait for a new court document or uh, court time on the docket. So here we are at June... Um, in June, this is before Lori asked for the jury trial and before the guardians were placed, Tom Ware submits a report to the court where he had met with Tylee uh, and Lori at a park. And the meeting lasted about 30 minutes, and he says it was quite pleasant. The child didn't want to leave her mother's side, even though Lori was telling her to go play. And he didn't push the issue. And that's normal. I mean, you know, I've had times where I've taken my kids really fun places, and they'd rather hang out with me, but... Um, I'm sure Tylee, you know, just all these strange people in her life that are doing professional things, asking questions and, and things like that. I bet her little mind couldn't wrap around it because at this point she's how old? She's, she's five, right? Five years yeah. old. Good grief. That's, I mean, she's a baby. So I can't imagine like her having to see and go through this whole ordeal. Right, and I'm going to tell you, with all the counselors, with the medical exams that she had, with the illnesses in between that we know she was kind of, I don't know, at five she was starting to, to, to be in and out of the hospital, but it's consuming for the parent to have to fight this in court, and, and I mean, Lori has so many irons in the fire. There's just motion after motion. Sometimes there are motions every other day. Yeah. It's so, just back and forth. It, it really is. It's tit for tat. But when Lori files a motion, I mean, Joseph has to respond to that. He has to give his side of the story. And, and essentially, it's asking to do the same thing she's doing a lot of the time. And I thought we would be really deep into these documents for a long time. But they're repetitive. I'll tell you, um, 1,700 pages is a lot. But I think about 800 of them are just like visitation schedules that they attach to previous orders so it's not as much as you think. Yeah. I mean, when you, in, in looking and continuing with this document, um, we see that, um, so Mr. Rodriguez uh, seems to be, um, oh, I'm sorry, it's Miss Rodriguez, um, was the director who acted as, an administrative supervisor. So we see her, um, she put Mr. Ware in contact with a child therapist, which is Susan Shinsky. Uh, and we see here that she's seen Tylee on several occasions. Uh, her last session ended towards the end of May. And she says that Tylee was rather avoidant when talking about issues with her father and displayed quite a bit of anxiety around the topic. Uh, she would simply say she didn't want to talk about it, either about issues with her father or the sexual abuse allegations. Yeah. Um, so, 
Well, I mean, if you think about it from Tally's perspective, you have strangers asking you questions about your dad who, I mean, from what I gather, and correct me if I'm wrong, it, she hasn't been with him a ton. Yeah. Right. And and when she's with him, she her mom's sending her to do things around the house, like take pictures of the bathroom. And so for Tylee, she wasn't able to just relax and enjoy her dad. At home, I'm sure the conversation was about this case way more than it should have been in front of her. Yes. So no wonder she's anxious and talking about it. It seems like every stranger wants to talk about her dad. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's... Yeah, and then one part here that that I, I it, it's kind of worded as if this is the case. We're not sure, but we're just going to put it out there. Was that I have reviewed the medical report of Tylee's examination, which included an internal examination. So I would assume, since they're talking about a medical and an internal, this poor kid at five was put through an internal examination, most likely to check for signs of sexual abuse. Yeah, I mean that's. So that's crazy. And look, we totally believe that at least in, you know, with Tylee, these allegations were pumped into her and she was coached. And to think that she's having to have these very invasive examinations, which you take an 18 year old woman who's going for the first time. It's, it's embarrassing. It's not comfortable. And you're, you're trying to tell a five year old, you know, nobody's supposed to touch you there. And then somebody's having to, I, I just, Oh, this poor kid. Yeah. Yeah. You, and it just goes to show that Lori had no regard as far as Tylee's well being emotionally or physically. If it meant she accomplished her goal, yeah. then oh well, no big deal. You put your child through that to try and prove that, you know, she was sexually assaulted and Joe passes the test. So I don't Right. I yeah. don't know. So we continue with this document and see that um Colby is an important factor in the case, and thus far, it's been very difficult to obtain much information about him. Um, they say here, uh, Tom says, my appointment and consent forms allow me to obtain information about Tylee only, though the allegations and issues involve both children, and both children's stories are interrelated. Uh, he's asking for the court to give him access regarding Colby and for the parties to sign any necessary consent forms he might need. Uh, he wanted to interview Colby as well. And we know from uh, previous documents that Lori would not make either one of them available to speak yeah. with him. So, And it's sad for Colby at the same time, too, because, I mean, he's having to deal with, with the stress of the litigation at home. And then he's got to get drug into it where he's needing to talk to professionals. But it's so necessary because you have to, with Colby being involved and named and stuff, the fact that she wasn't giving him over to these professionals, to me, is questionable. Yeah. You know, what are you trying to hide? So we hop over, and I thought this was very Lori-like, we're looking at a financial declaration. And so you have to submit those when you're going in for any kind of modification of child support. If you're asking for more money, they make both parents submit one of these and it tells your monthly expenses. And I thought it was funny. She says that her gross wages and salary income were $160 a month. Yeah. And I'm assuming that's coming from her hair salon or her I, hair cutting, I, whatever yeah, it was. I guess. And then she gets 2000 a month for child support. So her total income a month, she claimed, was $2,160. But if you look at her living expenses, her rent or house payment was $1,600 a month. And her car payment was $1,000 a month. I don't know of many single moms that have $1,600 a month rent payments or $1,000 a month cars. Yeah, and if you look at the total on that whole list, it's $7,100 a month. That she says she needs to just live a normal life. She says she's in the hole $5,015 every single month. Yeah. I mean, she she didn't learn how to modify her lifestyle to accommodate the fact that she got divorced. Exactly. It happens every day. You, you, you know, you can't drive a $1,000 a month car. You can't live in the nicest neighborhood. No. Apparently, she didn't get that memo. 
So in September, September 7th of 2007, there is a petition, counter petition for the termination of parental rights and a counter petition to modify the parent child relationship. And so Lori is asking the court to just terminate his parental rights altogether. And They've spent all this money fighting this whole thing. Yeah. And now just terminate his parental rights. Yeah, because that's what she wanted. She just wanted to get money and as much as she could. So if you're if if you have joint custody, a lot of times your your child supports a lot less than if you have full custody. Because the the court assumes if the other parent has has the child 50% of the time, they're paying 50% of the cost. So, so here's my question. If she's terminating, wanting to terminate parental rights, okay, that's what she's saying, right? Yeah. If if that's the case, does he still pay child support? Um. Yeah. I, I mean, I've seen it where in a situation where there's an allegation made and whether if, if that's proven to be true, they still have a financial obligation to the kid. Yeah, I, I guess it, it's it's a touchy subject there because I've seen cases where it's not like, OK, I give up all parental rights and mm -hmm. I'm not responsible for the child. So that's, uh, that's yeah, a, you know. No, if in a situation like this, if he let's just say he would have been found guilty on something and then his parental rights were terminated, he I believe he would have still had to pay child support. That's usually how it goes. Now, if he had I went to jail for it or something, I I'm not sure how they do. That. I mean, I guess you just don't get money. So here's what's funny is is Lori loves money, yeah, and yet she's accused him of something that could put him in jail for decades. Exactly, and then she would have had no money. Yeah, he's gonna be you know sweeping floors and making. Five like dollars a day. License plates and all that stuff. Yeah. Kind of like Lori's going to be doing the rest of her life. Yeah. Um, so she just claims that things have materially and substantially changed since the order was given. And she again reminds the court that she believes Joe has abused Tylee and Colby over an extended amount of time. And um, so a week later... Joseph Ryan files his own request to be the sole custodian of the kid. I want to see the judge that was on this. I want to just hear his. He could have wrote a book on just this one case. Oh, yeah. I think anybody who touched this case with a 10-foot pole are probably, I mean, even before she made national news, this is probably one of those cases where you're, telling somebody new in your office, hey, I had this one case that lasted years, and man, was it a whopper. Yeah. This is just unheard of with how nasty it is. It's not unheard of, but it's just, this is so far beyond reasonable. And so Joseph is asking for child support to be paid to him. Uh, just all the things that Lori asked, essentially. Joe just turned right around and, and had his own made. So do you think, you know what I really wonder is, at this point, as far as like Lori's family, um, I wonder how involved they are in all this. I, I don't know, like her mom and her sister. I, I I haven't seen them named anything, which I thought we would. Yeah, no, I'm not sure how where they were living. I know they moved around some, and of course Lori moved around some. So uh, I don't I don't know. I don't know where they are. But yeah, yeah they're not anywhere listed anywhere. Yeah, I don't know. I just. It's curious. So do you remember on, on a couple of podcasts ago, we were talking about how it was mentioned in like one sentence of some paperwork Joseph had filed that he wanted to raise Tylee with Christian principles. Yes. And I thought, well, I guess he's not a Mormon. Um, Cause I don't know if Mormons identify themselves as Christians. I, I don't, I'm not. They do. They do. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. But anyway, so, there's a paper here, and this was on September 17th. This is literally a week after she asked for his parental rights to be terminated, and he asked for hers to be terminated, or not terminated, but to be the sole custodian. So on September 17th of 2007, now at this point, they are getting ready for a jury trial, for a jury to determine who gets Tylee. And Lori, she wants some testimony or a witness to not even be allowed to come in and testify. He was going to testify about the principles of Mormonism as a witness for Joe. 
<laughs> and she doesn't want it in there. Yeah, I, I found that kind of curious. I mean, I wonder if this point was she possibly even before what we heard was a near death experience from April Parker in Hawaii. I wonder if th- at this point was she already kind of on some extreme views. Could be. Yeah. Yeah, it could be. Um, but, who knows? But it is, I mean, maybe she's saying he's not qualified or something. I think that's what she says. He's not qualified, but. Right. I mean. The, the opinion of the expert, the principles of Mormonism is unreliable. Yeah. And the underlying facts supporting the expert's opinion do not provide a, a sufficient basis for the expert's opinion. So she just wanted that thrown out. Yeah. I mean, that does sound like she's not not wanting um, that definition or those principles laid out in court. Okay. So that's sort of a minor witness, I guess you could say. But then the same day, she petitions the court to prevent Tom Ware, who is the guardian on this case and has been the guardian on this case pretty much as far back as we can tell because he does not have the education training, specialized knowledge, skill, or experience to provide such an opinion. Yeah, and we don't know how long Tom Ware was there, but we know from Vivian Lewis's, you know, her statement, she had been there 32 years, and we know from documents that they were really close. So, um, I mean, it tends to, you know, you tend to believe that he was there a long time as well. Yeah, so the next paper... comes through in October, and this is October the 3rd of 2007, and what had happened was they had a court date for September 24th, 2007 to start the trial to to figure out who gets Tylee, and it didn't happen. So they rescheduled the case for October 8th, 2007, and apparently Joseph Ryan did not file some paperwork in time, some um, stuff he should have submitted by a certain date. So Lori runs with that and asks that all this evidence that he was planning to put forth not be allowed. Again, it's, you know, some, it's not going her, it's it's not doing what she wants. Right. Um, And of course, we've been there. You see times where attorneys miss something. They don't, they're not only working your case. So things could happen in a date mix up or whatever. Um, and she wants it all thrown out. Yeah. She doesn't want the proposed parenting plan, the proposed support decision, none of that brought in. And that, that's kind of the, the center of, of, of what they're going to court for. Yeah. And again, think about it. Your kid is still getting dragged through all of this stuff. Right. And then um, she asked for her $600 in attorney fees back. Wow. Yeah. Um, so we're going to move on. And so um, in looking at uh, this is a uh, her a respondent counter petitioner, her motion. She's saying here um, that she wants to refrain from any mention or interrogation directly or indirectly in any manner whatsoever, um, including the offering of documentary evidence concerning any of the matters set forth herein. Um, And it's, you know, if said matters are introduced into the trial of this cause through a party, a witness, or an attorney, such introduction will cause irreparable harm to respond its case, which will not be cured by any jury instruction. Um, so it's just back and forth. Yeah, um, she's she's just wanting everything that Joe has on his side to not even be entered in. I guess he's just going to stand there and look pretty the whole time. Yeah. Now we're getting ready to get into um, what she's asking to be removed that she doesn't want brought into court. And this list is so long. Oh, There's yeah. like 30, you know, what, 30-something things or 40-something things. Yeah, so we'll go through them really quickly. So we're going to start with those. And the first thing she asked for, she does not want testimony about communication with her lawyers. That's pretty common. I mean, they're not going to say, what did you talk to your lawyer about on this date or that date? And um, 
Yeah, so the, the, the next one is any attempt in the presence of the jury to seek or request Lori Valor's attorneys to produce documents to stipulate to any fact or to make any agreement. Um, and this is just, it's just crazy. She also doesn't want brought in any mention that she is a Mormon. Yeah. I, I mean, I thought that was really odd. Well, I mean, honestly, why is that such a big deal? I don't under, I, we don't know. I just don't understand why all of a sudden she doesn't want this witness about Mormonism, about the principles and the teachings, and then she doesn't even want mention she's a Mormon. Yeah, and then you look at she doesn't want uh, to mention that any part of your witness goes to church every Sunday and tithes or does not go to church and does not tithe. Uh, evidence of religious beliefs of a witness is not admissible to enhance credibility. Like, really? Yeah. Um, okay. And then she doesn't want it mentioned that she drinks or spends excessively on liquor. Intoxication is not an issue in this trial, and this evidence would prejudice the jury. Wow. Any mention that any party is rich or poor. On paper, she really tried to make herself look like the struggling single mom. Um, and Joseph's, uh, we didn't go through Joseph's financial declaration, but he made a very decent living. Yep. But when you're paying all this money to attorneys, it's not so decent. No. It's getting, you know, flushed down the toilet. Look, I understand if there is a valid concern about a child's well-being. But Lori just kept initiating all these hearings, all these motions. And Joe had no choice but to, to answer those if he wanted to see his daughter. Exactly. So what was he to do? Okay. So, I mean, he, he did what he had to do. He just kept fighting. Um, so we look at, like, the, th the number 13 on this list. Uh any comment by Joseph Ryan's attorney that informs the jury of the effect of its answers to the questions in the charge. Mm. I'm like, what in the world? Why is all this on here? Well, I, I mean, she's just throwing a lot of stuff against the wall. And the more that the judge grants is in her favor. But... I, these aren't checked off, so we don't know if they were granted, denied, or agreed upon because the, the attorneys can say, okay, yeah, we both agree. We won't bring that in. We don't see what was actually allowed in. Yeah. So we, we're not sure. Um, she didn't want any mention that the parties are engaged in settlement negotiations. Yeah. Or what? involved in other suits. Yeah. I don't know that she was involved in any other suits at this time, but. Uh, she didn't want to brought I mean, in, if you didn't. don't want it brought in, obviously there may be something hanging around there. I don't know. And she didn't want uh, the jurors to hear that they should put themselves in Joe Ryan's shoes. Yeah. Like, you're basically trying to tell the other side of this. They can't, they can't talk to the jury this way, that way, this way, that way. Yeah. I mean, and both sides are going to do this. I mean, you're going to yeah. say, well, this kind of makes me look bad, so let's let's try to get that thrown out. But, yeah. I mean, this list is, like, longer than my Christmas yeah. list when I was five. Exactly. It's a lot. So the, one of the big ones is um, that Tom Ware not be allowed to testify. Oh, gosh. As to his expert opinion. She also doesn't want Vivian Lewis to testify, who's 35 years in the business, yeah. saying that she does not have the experience or the credibility. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty brazen to say that every person on there, that especially Vivian Lewis, who I think was the only one who saw this whole situation for what it was and wanted Joe to have custody of Tylee, and she got cancer, so she had to quit the case. But she didn't want her testifying, probably for that reason alone. Yeah. Yes, most definitely. And again, you see her, these are people who are not doing what she wants them to do, and this is how she acts. You throw in uh, one of the other ones, uh, any attempt uh, by counsel to elicit testimony regarding the arrest, conviction, or incarceration of Barry Cox. So that's her dad. Yeah. So she doesn't want that brought into into uh, evidence she also doesn't want any evidence of the alleged altercation between joe ryan and alex cox 
I'm sorry, that's important. That's hugely important because it shows that Lori and her brother in front of Tylee, um, that Alex tased Joe. That is, a th- number one, the guy's got a taser. Yeah. I mean, like, you got a five-year-old running around. First of all, I want to know that taser's safe and locked up. Yeah. But, I mean, to say that that's not relevant, I mean, it's... It's very important. He was found guilty and went to jail. I don't know at this point, because at one point they tried to subpoena the uh, police officer associated with this to testify, and he responded and said, or asked that he not be made to testify because it's an ongoing matter and nothing had been concluded with the case yet. And they granted that. And they also granted, um, I believe at the same time there were still investigations about the sexual abuse that was going on in the Valley. Yeah. And I think that was simply because the uh, mix up with Vivian Lewis being sick and having to do all that. So I think it was a combination of all those things. It was, but the other thing too is, um, she didn't want any anything, th- and this is a good time to kind of talk about this because it relates to it. The additional pages that were dropped on Friday, we looked through those, and to be honest with you, we're not going to cover it for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's about Charles and Cheryl Wheeler, his wife before Lori. It's about their divorce, their custody issues, child support, all that. It's a lot of information. It doesn't really relate to any of this. And the other reason is there are some children involved in in this aspect, and I fully believe they are victims of Lori. Yes. And I don't feel like it's our part to um, bring them into this podcast in a way that could be damaging or embarrassing, and these are young adults now. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's kind of where we stand on that. Yeah, and it has nothing to do with what we're doing here so right and I'm, I'm not protecting anybody I'm not going to minimize anything we read about any party in, in, in those papers but at the end of the day there are young adults now who have had to deal with Lori in their childhood believe me she made it traumatic and we're just not going to do that so yep. but one thing that Lori did not want to be discussed is an issue that came up during the 900 pages we read about some things going on in their home, in Charles and, and Lori's home, because it would make her look bad. Yep. So it's not surprising, but she didn't want that to be talked about. And then she didn't want any characterization um, that pr- uh, terminating parental rights is like a death sentence. Exactly. In other words, let's not remind the jury if Joe's stripped of his right to see his daughter, it would be terrible. Yeah. I mean, I, you don't have to tell the jury that. Nope. They already know. So then we uh, jump ahead to the motion to squash. Quash. The, quash the subpoena. Yeah. And all this is, we just touched on it, was uh, the detective that was dealing with the tasing incident, he was subpoenaed to come talk about it and... I assume that might have been maybe Joe's request, but they um, he asked that they not. And then the same thing was that there were some documents that named um, Lori, Joseph, and Colby. Uh, those not be brought in. So what it is, I think, is these were, were pending charges that hadn't been satisfied yet or heard. And, you know, you don't want to put pending charges in front of a jury because, as we saw, Joe Ryan was never convicted of anything. The grand jury just declined to take that over to trial. So had they brought that up, it would be bad for Joe, even though we know he lost custody with this jury trial. Yep. So anyways, we are going to stop there today. It's kind of repetitive in that it's tit for tat, back and forth. But we do want to make it to the end of the 1700 document, 1700 page document that um, that we have. But I'm going to tell you it at this point, I think we may just start looking at the jury trials and just get the best points from those and kind of summarize everything, because 
I don't know that I can handle much more of this uh, this stuff. It, yeah, it's just fighting back and forth. It's, yeah, so we could probably summarize it right now and tell you what happens. We know what happens, but it's just back and forth, y'all. Yeah. It's so nasty. But we would love to have you ask questions. We have people that shoot us questions, and we try to answer them. If we need to go over something on the podcast, we can. Um, and check us out on social media. You yep. have those handles, right? I do. We're on Twitter at Pretty Lies Alibi. And Facebook, we are there under Pretty Lies and Alibis. So give us a like on both platforms and shoot us some questions, comments, whatever. And if you've missed a podcast, you can always go back and, and catch that on um, on our website, which is www.prettyliesandalibis.org or on Spreaker. And where else are we? Oh, we're I on, forget. We're on SoundCloud. We're um, SoundCloud. Spotify. Spotify. Yeah. So I think those are the Apple, main ones. Apple, whatever it is. Apple Podcasts. Yeah. yeah. Yep. yep. So uh, thanks for listening. And uh, you guys have a good rest of your evening that's left of it. Yep. Not much left. <laughs>